Hey, hello everybody. I'm Laszlo Parkani from Sagat Hungary and uh, in the next short presentation I will be talking about uh, how to save treatment and chair time by using modern biological concepts in our implant cases. So let's see what our main goal is today when we are treating patients with implants. So I think our main and most important goal will always be to have a predictable and long-term successful treatment outcome. That's above all. But uh, after that, there are some other important things which we achieve and we, which we aim for when we do uh, our implant cases. So we want to have uh, nowadays, last quite a couple of years, less surgeries and less chair time. We want to get everything done as quick as possible, without compromising the outcome, the success, and the predictability uh, from our treatments. We also would like to uh, lower the cost as much as possible, as for ourselves and especially for our patients to make all treatments and implant treatments more affordable. And uh, last but not least, we want to have greater status. So we want to have, I think, year by year as implant dentistry is evolving, we want to have better and better in aesthetics. What is our ultimate goal to have aesthetics as natural, as the natural teeth, where no one can make a difference? So within aesthetic, that's our main goal. But I think altogether, these four things are what we are striving for these days in implant dentistry. So let's see, uh, first a case, which is the old school way of placing implants. So this is the delayed implant placement, which we know from the 70s, 80s. But let's just see a um, case to see that here, um, a patient with not the best oral hygiene, but thick biotype, central incisor missing, someone was extracting this tooth, letting it heal, and, and uh, placing here a fixed part of the denture, a bridge with pink ceramics. It looks totally not good. To, to be polite, okay? And uh, what we do in this case, we remove, of course, this bridge, um, place the implant in a correct two-dimensional position with the stent. And as we can see, we are lucky here. Thick biotype, even by having bridge for long years, we have sufficient amount of bone. So after healing, we have quite, quite good contours. But as you can see uh, on the left with the arrow, we have a little, concavity on the implant side compared to the contralateral. So we do a little soft tissue pouch to porosity graft and we compensate for this little lack of soft tissue to get really ideal, perfect looking soft tissues around the implant. As you can see, after shaping the soft tissues, we have quite symmetric contour to the contralateral tooth. We have the build up of the teeth and we place single crown, of course, without any pink ceramics. Still not the best oral hygiene, just, just a couple of weeks after delivery, but a much nicer, more aesthetic and more cleansable outcome for the patient. So let's see the timeline, how we achieve this result. So we do the extraction, wait about three months, uh, do the implant placement. We have sufficient bones, so about two months healing is enough in this case. We do the soft tissue graft, ideally aesthetic zone, still enough, another two months of healing. And we shave the soft tissue, couple of sessions and uh, final restoration a week or two. So roughly, of course, we could argue a couple of weeks here and there, maybe even a month, but the roughly total treatment time is about nine months here. And the number of sessions needed to achieve this is about nine sessions. So we have an um, acceptable outcome, but uh, the number of sessions and the treatment time is quite considerably long. So let's see another case where do we do preservation and augmentation. So in this case, uh, we have a failing central incisor. We can see the pus coming out on the buccal fistula. So there's an active inflammation, no chance of uh, immediate placement in this case, unfortunately. And also we can see after extraction, there is lack, complete lack of the buccal wall. So what we can do here is we do a socket preservation with a bovine bone within collagen sponge. Um, and we put a Maryland bridge for the healing, a temporary. As we can see after healing, it's actually quite a nice soft tissue healing. So we can see a nice convex 
thick contour of soft tissue, some bone mineral particles. But after we open, we can see uh, here uh, with the arrow is shown that unfortunately we have a lot of granulation tissue there. So basically it's sort of soft tissue within our socket area. So not ideal for an immediate placement. However, when we clean this out completely, we have a sufficient bone um, to place an implant with primary stability in the correct position within the bony envelope, which is very important, but there's no bone on the buckle, as you can see. So we need to do not only this preservation, we have to do an augmentation after that. It's a so-called contour augmentation after Boozer, a uh, GDR procedure. Unfortunately, no pictures of the procedure, but we can see the contral x-ray, the cervical area of the implant. We have nice two millimeter thick buckle wall. So we can go on to shape the soft tissues, of course, from scratch, because we just had a healing abutment after the GDR healed. But we can see a quite nice a soft tissue contour uh, after uh, the shaping. And uh, here we can see after delivery of the final crown, after the shaping of the soft tissue, we have a quite acceptable outcome for the patient. But let's see the timeline, how much time in this case we need for that. So we do the extraction and the preservation. It needs about five to six months. Okay, we could argue about a month here. Uh, implant placement plus the GBR, again, at least five to six months uh, healing we need um, because of the entirely lack of buckle bowl. Uh, shaping of the soft tissues from scratch, so nothing helped us with that. Uh, we had to do it from zero, couple of weeks, and the final restoration. So let's see the timeline of uh, this case. It's about 13 months, again, roughly. It could be maybe a little shorter, but about 12 to 13 months, more than a year, or at least a year for treatment time and about eight sessions. So it's an acceptable result, I believe, but a lot of time. So we need to go when possible for shorter time and, and still we could improve a little bit on aesthetics as well. So let's see an immediate placement when we have chance to place immediately and the uh, so-called dual zone technique after Tarno. Uh, so what is our basic issue uh, with um, uh, immediate placement. So uh, we know if we, um, especially in the aesthetic area, so the anterior uh, part of the maxilla, we uh, extract the tooth entirely, not leaving anything from the periodontal tissues, and we place an implant. And if we do not do anything else, so no other uh, procedure accompanied by that, then we will definitely have shrinkage of uh, the horizontal bone and shrinkage of the soft tissues and we will have in like 95% of the cases at least uh, heart tissue uh, bone deficiency on the buckle of the implant as we can see on the picture and why is that it's because of the blood supply the really thin so-called bundle wall uh, bundle bone the buckle wall of uh, the uh, anterior incisors um, has a dual blood supply partially from the periodontium and we remove the tooth, we cut that blood supply. So either we have to compensate for that or we have to keep that extra blood supply, either or. If we do not do anything, things will go bad for sure. So uh, let's see uh, first with this dual zone technique how we can operate initial situation, a vertical fracture of a central root canal treated incisor. We have to extract it in two pieces, as you can see, not the best oral hygiene, unfortunately. Um, we have a thick biotype here, but you can see after removal of the entire root, we have no uh, buckle wall whatsoever. So first we have to recreate the buckle wall with uh, a collagen membrane, a quite thick sort of form stable, not quite, but a little bit form stable, a thick collagen membrane in this case we did. Uh, with the stand, we put the implant in the correct three-dimensional position and we have a quite major buckle gap, at least like three millimeters. We fill it up with bovine bone mineral to create uh, the buckle wall from scratch. In this case, it was not an any rich implant, doesn't matter which brand, another brand of about 25 unit centimeters. For me, uh, for an immediate uh, provisional crown, that's a no, but I believe that most of us would agree that with 25 unit centimeters, it's quite a risky case to immediately 
for the provisional. So we didn't do that. We just um, patient gets um, a Maryland bridge for the healing time. And after that, not from scratch, but you know, from a, a soft tissue concavity, which we have because of the uh, healing of the case, we have nice bone underneath, but we have shaped soft tissues. We have abundant soft tissues, fortunately, uh, in this case. And we could get, I think, a quite a static, quite convex uh, soft tissue architecture, which is really, really similar to one of the natural tooth adjacent to that. And um, just by the long-term provisional crown, we could get, if not perfect, but uh, a static result, which is really, really acceptable. This is just a provisional crown, but because of the um, uh, composite fillings on both adjacent teeth, I believe this actually looks better than any ceramic will look because of the adjacent teeth, which don't look that good. So this is definitely an acceptable outcome. Statically, uh, let's see the timeline of this case. So here, first time we did immediate placement. Uh, but we did not have a huge primary stability and no buckle walls. So in this case, just to be sure on the safe side, we wait four months of healing. We shape the soft tissues. Okay, two or three sessions, not that much because we have quite good contours, but still we need to shape it, find a restoration. See, the total timeline would be roughly about five months and number of sessions, about six sessions. Of course, every time you could argue about a couple of weeks here and there, but... Roughly, that would be our case, um, our time case in uh, this one. And as we can see, we're going down in time and the number of sessions. So that looks quite quite okay uh, compared to the uh, first uh, uh, conventional treatment. So uh, already by doing an immediate placement, we saved a lot of time. What can we do to save even more time than that? So let's do, see an immediate placement when we do socket shield. Okay, first of all, what is socket shield? Here's a beautiful image by uh, my great mentor, Howard Gluckman, who uh, is sort of, uh, if not the inventor, but definitely one of, if not the greatest guy in socket shield. So he's really amazing in that. And here on his image, we can see what the basic principle of socket shield is. We do not compensate for the lack of uh, the, uh, and the resorption of the buckle wall, like in a dual zone case with um, uh, some uh, bone mineral, uh, but we keep the cervical and the middle third of the buckle portion of the root itself with the periodontal ligaments, and this way keeping the double blood supply of the bundle bone, and we just place the implant to the parallel in the correct three-dimensional position. So how, let's see how this works. Here is an unrestorable uh, lateral incisor. Uh, it's basically just a root with root canal filling, but no infection. Uh, fortunately, we remove um, all the root canal filling and dissect the tooth at first. Then we prepare the shield and place the implant to the parallel of that shield, a really narrow implant. It's again, not an, an any ridge implant. Uh, and we were using regular birds in this case to create a shield. What does that mean? Uh, because uh, I was using the regular birds, it means it's quite a struggle to create that shield. As you can see, it's possible, but it takes, for me at least, about 40 to 50 minutes maybe to, to really precisely uh, do that with those short, regular fisher birds and uh, um, around diamonds, so it's really a struggle. They're not long enough, you cannot measure, so you can do it, it's possible, but it's difficult. And again, not an enriched implant, not too much um, bone for primary stability, and not too much primary stability, unfortunately, in this case, about 20 meters, centimeters, definitely a no for an immediate um, provisional crown, so we did not do that. The patient um, got the, um, um, cantilever pontic provisional uh, anchored on the two centrals. We can see right after uh, the treatment and after the uh, healing of the treatment, left and right image. As we can see, buccal contour, hardened soft tissue didn't change at all. So we basically have the same contours. We change along our healing abutment first. We can see that because of the socket shield, the contour already 
quite okay, but still we need some mucosal shaping because we didn't have uh, the individual crown immediately just because of the lack of primary stability, but that can be done in two or three sessions, a nice shaping, and this is just a long-term provisional crown here, but you can see really, really superb soft tissue and definitely under that hard tissue contours and you would never say that the lateral is the implant and the central is the tooth. So basically we have the best aesthetics possible by doing this socket shield. So let's see the timeline of um, this procedure, extraction and implant placement. We need about three months healing, not the best primary stability, um, but um, three month healing in this case, uh, is sufficient. We still need some shaping of the soft tissue. However, we haven't had start because of the shield, but the cervical part we still have to shape and after that, the final restoration. So what would be the total treatment time here for about four months? And uh, what will be the number of sessions, about five sessions? So we're really getting there. We're doing immediate placement in this case and uh, um, we couldn't do because uh, of the lack of primary stability and immediate provisional, but still about four months, five sessions, we can do it in quite an acceptable time. Let's see if we can even go lower uh, on time with this. Another immediate placement with socket shield. But we have some differences here. So it's a broken root canal straight tooth. You can see that on the parallel we have a vertical fracture to till this really deep composite filling. So after just with a plier removing that parallel part and the filling, that's what we get. So completely unrestorable tooth. Here we do the uh, again the dissection of the tooth, measure distally, remove uh, the parallel fragment. Um, after the buccal fragment, we reduce according to the steps described by, by Dr. Howard Gluckman, and we get a really nice uh, thickness and shape of the shield. But in this case, I was using Howie's pet kit. It's the Mega Jam Produce pet kit to prepare his shield. And instead of struggling for 40, 50 minutes, it was like an average about 15 to 20 minutes from scratch to get the shield perfectly ready. So much easier, less press, less chair time, definitely with that kit. Okay, so we place the implant in the correct three-dimensional position, but in this case, we use an any ridge implant. And uh, I just started, you know, using these implants and it's a completely different story. So by having a patient, a young female patient with a soft maxilla, still was able to achieve 45 newton centimeter of primary stability, which is amazing. So in this case, we filled up the gap uh, because of some protocols, but some other protocols uh, don't even uh, advise the filling uh, with the uh, bone mineral. So it's an optional thing to do that. But in, in this case, I was doing this. And because being um, second by cuspid, uh, it's not an aesthetic area. So it would have been more time and more cost, more money for the patient to have an immediate uh, provisional crown, which we could have done easily. But in this case, we just use an appropriate ideal size of healing abutment, which is so close to our future final emergence profile that I will not use a provisional crown here. We just need about one millimeter of shaping, changing of the buckle soft tissues that we can do the, the, with the definitive crown right away immediately, not being even in a static site. So it's a second premolar. Uh, and what is the timeline in this case? Let's see, uh, extraction implant placement, huge primary stability, two months of healing easily, uh, and final restoration about um, two weeks. So total treatment time of about two and a half months. And we have evidence that uh, after immediate placement, after 10 weeks, uh, we can uh, um, torque and um, uh, deliver the definitive restoration. And the total number of sessions in this case will be three sessions. So three sessions in one, uh, in, in two and a half months, 10 weeks. So surgery, impression, definitive. Three sessions, less than three months. 
So I believe that is our main goal, our main objective time-wise, and that is our main objective biology and aesthetic-wise too, to reduce this time and get uh, really predictable aesthetic results for the patient. So just summarizing all what we have heard in the last couple of minutes, um, our, our main goal, uh, as we discussed, is reducing the number and length of our sessions while providing predictable and aesthetic results. It's, it's the most important, but meanwhile, we want to reduce time. So that's our main objective. In order to achieve this, we really need to think more and more in immediate placement than we did 10, 15 years ago. More and more cases are today immediate placement cases, which were not evidence-based 10, 20 years ago, definitely. So rather than augmentation and preservation, all those biomaterials, we want to go immediate when possible. Of course, it's not always possible. I know that. There's no argument about that. But whenever possible, we should go with that direction. Uh, and to effectively reduce the treatment time to be able to immediately place and uh, in the necessary aesthetic cases, even immediately place a provisional crown, we really need to have an appropriate implant which enables us in various indications, various bone situations to not only immediately place, but immediately place with a high torque, high primer stability to be able to deliver um, immediate provisional crown when necessary to reduce treatment time and gain status with that. And also what I think is really important that we really nowadays need to consider after all the evidence and all the cases we see day by day is keeping natural bale periodontal tissues instead of replacing um, them with either the patient's own soft and hard tissues or um, soft bone and soft tissue substitute materials because that's only cost and time rather than biology. So I believe we are going to a direction in modern implant dentistry where all these grafts and extra surgical techniques, extra surgical grafts, biomaterials, autografts should be a little bit rethought and going in the direction of nature and biology because nothing is better better than, than our own more, more nature. And we can sort of, sort of go in the direction to uh, keep that. And I think that is the best way uh, in the future in, in implant dentistry. And with that, I would like to thank you all for your kind attention.